and welcome back to Game Escape. Here today to talk about Tatsunoko versus Capcom. And you know, it was interesting. I was going through my game collection today and doing kind of my yearly inventory. And I came across the Wii section and I had a tremendous amount of nostalgia for this game. I think it's one of the more fascinating titles for the Nintendo Wii and also for gaming in the seventh generation. Um, why is that? I think this game, I was, uh, I was looking at the dates, and it's pretty interesting. This game came out in Japan in 2008, both in the arcades and on the Japanese Wii. And that puts it, as far as a, a home release, uh, actually before Street Fighter 4. Now, Street Fighter 4 was probably in development at this point, but it didn't come out on the home consoles into, until 2009. It had already come out in the arcades, but I sensed, uh, even back when I, I read about it in the magazines and before it was released in North America in 2010, that there was, you know, this was Capcom's kind of test of the water, as it were. It was the, the game that I think bridged the gap for Capcom fighters from kind of that awkward era after, say, I don't know, their attempts at, like, 3D Street Fighter, and and uh, it, it, it sort of ushered in the 3D characters on 2.5D, you know, in that 2.5D um, stage. And it certainly set the, the, uh, the tone for what they were going to try to do on the seventh console generation. Um, this was the forerunner uh, to Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and it felt that way when I was playing it. I played it initially back after its release here in the States. Um, I want to say I played it in a, in a store. I remember playing it in, in kind of an independent video game store um, and being really surprised because I had a, a prejudice against the Wii at that time. I thought it was you know, just for kids. There were no games that I really wanted to play, but I definitely wanted to play this one. This is what drew me in, and it is really a terrific fighting game. It's a little bare bones uh, by today's standards. You have a time attack mode, an arcade mode, uh, an online mode, which uh, I'm guessing no longer functions because the uh, Nintendo cut uh, online support for the Wii. But, it, you know, it doesn't need to be more than that. It's just a classic Capcom, you know, home arcade game, basically. Uh, the only thing you're really working for in the arcade mode is to unlock characters. And uh, it's really a great cast of characters. Now, I say that not having been a fan of these Tatsunoko characters. Quite frankly, I don't know who any of them are. To me, they strike me as... 70s anime or manga characters, um, but the the I think one of the measures of a great fighting game is that they make the characters interesting to play and they communicate something about those characters through their move sets. And certainly in this game, uh, Capcom succeeds in doing that. Each character is interesting to play. They feel different. They feel exciting, and uh, not only to pull off the moves, but to have you know battles against each other. So I found myself just uh, on my initial playthroughs, just really going through and trying everyone out. Uh, the game is, I would say, on the easy side. The default difficulty is not that challenging. Uh, if you knock it down beyond the default uh, towards the you know, one or two star settings, it becomes essentially a, a training mode. The computer puts up almost no fight, uh, which incidentally is kind of good to test out the movesets of all of these Tatsunoko characters uh, with whom you may not be familiar. Uh, if you boost the difficulty uh, all the way, I don't know how many stars that is, but basically put it on its hardest setting, uh, it becomes extremely challenging, particularly the lar these large characters that you have to fight um, that, that cannot have a partner because they take up uh, a good bit of the screen. So this was, you know, this was the start. Uh, you're tagging out uh, just like Marvel vs. Capcom uh, 3 and I guess the ultimate version of that. Uh, the fighting feels really crisp. It is a simplified fighting system, certainly. Uh, 
you have uh, strong, medium, and weak strikes, and then based on your joystick input, it's going to determine whether those are punches or kicks. Uh, it has even a more simplified mode with the Wiimote, which I couldn't get into, didn't like at all. Uh, probably the best way to play it, as with any arcade game, is with a joystick. And it had its own, I believe it was a Hori fight stick, which I don't have. I did, however, plug it, er, plug my X Gaming dual joystick into the Wiimote. They sell a, an adapter that allows you to do that. And that was really the best way to play, although it was a little cumbersome with my setup. So I just played with the uh, the Nintendo, let's see, the Wii Classic Controller Pro, which is the classic controller with uh, kind of the PlayStation-style handles at the bottom, and it plays really, really well. I think the, the gate on that joystick um, is actually pretty good for, um, for fighting games. The other kind of defining feature of the game is, is just the great character designs. Not, not only their fighting mechanics, but uh, terrific character designs, lush backgrounds, great music. Obviously the Wii was kind of compromised being in standard definition, and it just never looks great on an HD uh, screen. But uh, this is one of the games that really, I think, makes the Wii look... Uh, as good as it can look, and just just a lot of crazy backgrounds. I think the airship for Mega Man Legends, uh, the mall from Dead Rising, stuff like that. So really, really a nice overall package. And again, it's the historical significance that makes this game so interesting. I, it's hard to believe. You know, a lot of people said that you know this the the seventh generation consoles, PS3, Xbox 360. This was the revival of the fighting game scene that we enjoyed in the early 90s, and it was Street Fighter 4 that, that did that. But this game, uh, at least as far as the home consoles are concerned, came before, and I think really sort of showed us uh, the path that is now taking us towards Street Fighter 5. Um, so as the Wii becomes a retro console, if you want to call it a retro console, or, you know, a simply a collectible console. I think this is one of the games that uh, people will gravitate to because it is truly unique. So let me know what you guys uh, think of Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. Uh, let me know in the comments below. I thank you as always for watching Game Escape, and I'll be back shortly with another video.